Okay, let's briefly talk about sound and music on the Nintendo Entertainment System. What you're seeing here is a sound option window from an emulator called Nestopia, which is a way you can view and play video games for the NES on a, on a PC or a Mac. And you see on this top row here, master volume, that's what we're going to be listening for. And then you see these five channels. Ignore the ones on the bottom. Those are for uh, NES games that had ex uh, additional sounds like some Konami games and everything, like Simon's Quest and stuff had extra sounds you can add. Originally, it just had these five channels. And they're labeled square one, square two, triangle, noise, and DPCM. This is kind of a mistake, square one, square two. They're actually not square waves. They're pulse waves. And the duty cycle is actually uh, editable. So you can change between a square wave and something more a uh, rectangle wave, if you will. So you can change the volume of these two um, when we're listening to a game we're going to play. And then the triangle wave, we talked about these in class, what they are, noise, and the differential post-cold modulation, meaning audio files, really bad quality audio files. And I'll show some of those later and how the NES could do that. So I'm going to be toggling between this window and a game, and I want everyone to listen for how this works. Also, it's important to talk a little bit about adaptive and interactive music in, at the same time. And you're going to hear how old games like, like Super Mario Brothers, which we're going to look at, uses these channels to send interactive sounds to the player. Okay, so close the window. And I'll play this for a little bit and like and then I'm going to go back and change the sounds and we're going to listen for what it's doing. Level 1. Now watch as I move Mario, no sounds yet. As I jump, it's an interactive sound, okay? I'm gonna jump on this Goomba. Interactive sound. Interactive sound. Alright. It's mushroom. Okay. That's kind of can be regarded as an adaptive sound. Now, sorry for that disturbing that cadence. So I'm opening up the sound thing again. Alright, I'm what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut down the squares. And the triangle. And we're just gonna to listen to the noise channel for a little bit. And I have to What do we got? Ooh, look, the bricks work. But the noise is the drums. That's supposed to be drums. Now I'm going to add in the triangle. Bring that back up. Doesn't really matter what volume. See how there's no interactive element? We have the baseline now, but there's no interaction here because that's saved on another channel. So I'm going to sound. Again, you're not seeing me do this because I didn't toggle the window back on. I'm putting on the second square wave. We got the melody. Still no sound of Mario jumping. If I go back now, I'm putting the square one wave back on. So I got all my channels back on here. Let me just even out the volumes. Then we got the harmony. Then we got that sound. So one more thing I'm going to do, I'm cutting down the channels of everything. Now we're just hearing square one. <laughs> Hear that? The jump sound is on that channel. So every time you make Mario jump, the music cuts out, the melody part, the, the notes that are assigned to the channel are going to cut out. So everything's back up, okay? Now, do some more interactive. What if I do this? Oops. Hear that? That was kind of an adaptive technique. It told you something about the game. We're going to do another one soon. Oh, yeah. I can't die. I want to know if I can do... All right. Look closely at the time. And watch what, and listen what happens to the music when we hit 100 clicks. So the music's twice as fast, and we had a little stinger telling us that, hey, we're running out of time. And then the music speeds up, and it gives you this sense of tension, right? To say, oh, no, we got to get going. We're about, we're going to die if we run out of time. And watch what happens when you do run out of time. And just one more. Actually, there's other music we can look at, but I'll just sit here for a bit. Watch how the music communicates to you. Another 
Stinger. Here's an example of a poor quality audio file from the NES. So here's another example of poor quality audio that these don't just start the game, Ghostbusters. This one is actually telling you something about the game as you play the game. Now check this out. Welcome, Red Warrior. So it told me, Welcome, Red Warrior. Now all the sounds, so many of the sounds in this game, listen, those are, you know, we're hearing differential coast put pulse code modulation and if I go into what I'm doing is I'm going back into my my sound and the way this game works is it's almost all like if I'm, I'm turning down all the the synthesizers I'm only putting the wave audio so now there's nothing but if I once I start dying you're gonna hear it oh, that right there see that was the sound this is just the wave file recorded this is not a synthesizer playing this um, Warrior, your life force is running out. So that voice just appeared to tell me my life force is running out. Put the sounds back on now, all the sounds. Red Warrior is about to die. There's another sound in the background telling me something. Adaptive audio, right? And then. 